Hi everyone, Jane from Pandemonium Art Gallery here, and today I'm going to show you how to paint the Northern Lights. Now, this was a painting that was requested on my Facebook page, and I had never painted Northern Lights before, but it was something that I had actually been trying to paint for quite a while. So, when you guys requested it, I, I had to hurry up and figure out how to paint it. I had done a variation in the past that I just wasn't happy with, and I could have taught you that one, but I, it just didn't feel right to me. So I jumped on Pinterest and all over the internet trying to find paintings and photographs of the Northern Lights to get a feel for what they looked like and the way they moved and the types of colors that were in them. And I learned one thing that every time the Northern Lights are pictured, in one way or another, they look completely different than every other one. So that was kind of difficult for me at first. I thought, well, how can I teach people how to paint this if I can't even get a good handle on what, what the Northern Lights actually look like? And then I realized another thing, that if there's so much variation in the paintings and photographs that you see of the Northern Lights, then that means that they really can look like whatever you want them to look like and you can paint them however you want. So while you're doing this painting, if your Northern Lights come out looking completely different from mine, that's okay. To start off with, go online and look up some photos of the lights and see what things you like best in it. What colors and different variations do you prefer? The way they move, how do you, how do you like that? And then take the techniques that I teach you here and incorporate that into your own painting. So make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials and let's get started. The brushes we'll be using today are a one inch flat brush, a round natural hair bristle brush. This one is a little smaller than what I usually use. It's about three eighths of an inch, but whatever size you're comfortable with will work. And a half inch flat brush or a wash brush. You'll also need a clean dry paper towel. The colors we'll be using are titanium white, Cadmium Yellow, Light Green Permanent, Primary Blue, and Diox Purple. I've already prepped my canvas by painting it black, but you can also buy canvases that are already painted black, so whichever you prefer. So gather up all of your things and let's get started. The majority of this painting is gonna be done with the round natural bristle brush. We're gonna start by wetting it in the jar, and then we're gonna take our paper towel and squeeze out as much water as possible out of this brush. It will stay a little bit damp, but you don't want it wet because it will spread the color out too much. You want the color to kind of stick where you put it so that you have to work a little bit to get it to move around. That's what's gonna help it get that really misty spread quality. So just squeeze that brush off really good until it's about dry. So I've zoomed you in here pretty close to show you exactly how we'll be using the brush. So we're gonna start in the center color and that's gonna be white. So I'm gonna take the brush and just dip a little bit of white. You see how much I have on there? Not a lot. And I'm gonna stick it off to the side here and tap it around to make sure I don't have too much paint and that the paint that I do have is spread around the end of the brush, not in one clump. So just a teeny bit, tap it around. So we'll go over the composition and how I'm laying this out after I zoom you out. But I'm gonna start right here with this little bit of white. Put it, I'm mean, put the tip of the brush straight onto the canvas, not flat, just straight on. And I'm gonna start scrubbing, just in really random shapes and directions. It doesn't have to be, you know, scribbled in a circle all the time. It doesn't have to be up and down. But that is the basic brush stroke that we're gonna use here, is just tiny, tiny bits of paint, lots and lots of scrubbing and scribbling. So what you're aiming for is to break up straight lines and to just really fluff the paint out as much as possible around the edges. If you get things like this, where you've got a hard line in there, you can either leave it or you can try and scrub it out. I think that when there's some hard lines, um, like this, 
it helps to give the northern lights a little bit more of a swirling quality so it doesn't have to be completely fuzzy like this area here but you do want to fuzz out around it so just scrub until no more paint is moving around so my composition is that i'm going to have my mountains the top of them be just over the one third mark so remember we split this into thirds we've got about a third here and about a third there so one two three different thirds i want the valley of my mountains to be right about at that one third mark so really anything that happens down here doesn't matter i'm still going to put enough energy into it that if something does happen to show that i'm okay with it but as far as what it looks like at the very bottom here don't sweat that we're going to paint over all of that so I'm gonna start here in the middle with the white and I'm gonna have the white be wide at the bottom and slowly tapering thinner here and going up tall. And I may do a couple little offshoots of white throughout here. So it doesn't have to be just in the center. And really you could spread it out throughout the entire thing if you want. So I've got a tiny bit more white tapped off on my plate and I'm just gonna start working this white section out. And this is just our first layer. We're gonna do two layers. And really when you're painting it, if you want, you can do as many layers as you feel like you need. So I'm gonna start taking this up. And as I work up, I am gonna angle my brush a little bit flatter and kind of, it's almost like scooting it up. And then just work out some of the little lines that I don't want in there with the scrubbing again. Let's get a couple little offshoot ones. And I want mine to all go pretty much straight up, but if you wanted more of a swirled effect, you can definitely do that. Straight up is just what I wanted to see. Let's do another one over here. If you're doing these little spires, try not to make them evenly spaced out or the same height. So I'm gonna do one a little bit closer there and a little bit shorter. white in there. Let some of it be a little bit stronger. Now I'm going to move on to the yellow and I'm not cleaning off my brush. I actually won't clean off my brush at all until I get to purple. So yellow being super transparent, if I take this yellow and put it over top of the black, it's going to appear green. If I take the pure yellow and put it over top of the white, the yellow is going to be too bright right now. So I'm going to get a little bit of white, tap it off over here by the yellow, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow and tap it into that white. So the white helps tone it down a little bit and also make it less transparent. Make sure you don't have too much paint on the brush. Now when I apply the yellow, I'm gonna do so right around the edge of the white and I'm gonna work it into the white. Don't be afraid to mix them. Mixing them is what's gonna give it that really glowing, kind of swirling effect. You don't have to be real precise with it. It doesn't have to reach all, it doesn't have to outline all of the white. But the important, the important thing is, is you want the yellow to come into the white a little bit kind of sporadically. And also with the black background, your goal is not to try and cover all of the black. You can let little pieces of it be blacker than others. So basically just kind of fill it in where you feel like it needs to go. You're gonna scrub it until it fuzzes out just like the white. So I'm gonna start right in here. 
See, I'm going to bring it down into the white a bit. And I don't think that's quite yellow enough. I'm going to work just a tiny bit more yellow into it. And if it ends up completely covering the white, don't worry about that because, like I said, we're going to do a couple of layers. And you can always add a color back in if you lose it. a small offshoot of the yellow here. If I decide I don't like it later, I can cover it with one of the next colors. Just keep working in tiny amounts of paint. I know that the, the temptation to get a lot of paint so you can go farther is there, but you're gonna end up spreading way too much paint around if you do that. the green I still I'm still not washing off my brush just gonna grab a little bit of green make sure I don't have too much tap it off and just like how I overlapped the yellow onto the white I'm gonna do that with the green overlapping slightly onto the yellow and taking it down into the yellow as well when you're working like this scrubbing small bits of paint in, the paint that you're working with is going to dry really fast. And that is to your advantage here because it means that your green isn't going to just blend in with your yellow and make a yellowish green. It's actually going to layer transparently on top of the yellow, which is going to allow both colors to glow through. spot a little bit darker that's what I mean by don't try and cover all of the black it just makes it makes it look less like a tangible object and more like light which is what you want this to look like with every color take the little spires that fade out up just a little bit higher. Now it's starting to glow and we're starting to get some depth. I'm gonna move on to my blue and I'm still not cleaning off my brush. And because blue is so close to black and it's really transparent, if I just put the blue straight on here, it's gonna fade into the black and you really won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna grab a tiny, tiny speck of white and tap it into there. I'm not really trying to make the blue lighter, but that little bit of white will just differentiate it from the background enough. I'll show you the difference because I will use some of the blue without white here and there. Make sure you really fade it into that green. Let's 
it's a little much white. That's going to be pretty light. That's okay though, I don't think I mind. But I had a little too much paint on my brush, so I'm going to spread it out here a little bit before I start scrubbing it. Because when I put the pressure on it to scrub, I'll lay down more paint. And I already have enough there. See, I've lost a lot of my white and my yellow. But again, since this is just the first layer, I'm not worrying about that. Almost done with the blue, I think. Can you see how much white I grabbed there? Just a little tiny bit on a couple of hairs. That's it. And that's really all the blue I'm grabbing too. If your blue is too light, where it's supposed to be blending in with the black, like I feel like that's way too light there. Now I'm gonna grab just the blue. And I can scrub over the edge of it and fan it into the black and that helps ease that transition between the lighter blue and the black. And I may actually go in here and just add a few spots of that pure blue. Now I am gonna clean off my brush for the purple. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because the green and the yellow will turn the purple to mud. So my brush is cleaned off and then dried off on my paper towel. Now like the blue, the purple is gonna be really dark and melt into the background and you won't be able to see it. So we're gonna take just a tiny bit of white again, just a teeny tiny bit, top it off over here, grab some purple and mix it into it. And we're gonna go around the edge of the blue. And slightly into the blue. See, that purple you almost can't even see. But around the edges, I like for the purple to really fade out. So it's really just where it's gonna be standing alone that we want it to have a little bit of the white in it. So I'm gonna brighten that spot up a bit. harder your pressure is, just like when we're painting the background with the flat brush, the harder your pressure is, the more paint you're gonna lay down. So if you feel like you've got a lot of paint on your brush, but you wanna feather a spot in, just super light, almost dusting pressure. Just very, very light pressure will help feather that in. And then you can push a little harder in spots where you want more of the color. Purple I'm taking almost completely to the top. And into the center of that super dark blue spot. And even if it goes over the green a little bit, it's okay because the green is dry so it will glow through the purple. And like right here where I've got that yellowish white, you can still tell that it was yellowish white where the purple reaches over it. Just adds to that glowing effect. Just lightly dusting over it here because I have quite a bit of paint on my brush, but I want that line blended out. And then heavier pressure up here where I want to lay more purple down. Ooh, that one got really light. Wipe off a little bit of that. A little more purple. 
So if you get a spot that's just not the right color, it's okay, just immediately stop and change it up. It's still pretty light. That's okay though. We'll just go with it for now. some solid purple and I can get that blended out a bit. Make sure that your purple goes all the way to the edge. You want it to look like the lights exist all over the sky, not just in this small view. Okay, I think that's good for the first layer. So I'm gonna clean off my brush again, dry it off, and we're gonna come in and make this center part. And probably right here, I'm kinda liking this spot, but it's really, really pale. We're gonna really brighten those up so it appears that this white yellow area is just glowing really intensely. All right, we're all cleaned off. Now the reason I didn't apply the white and the yellow, which are really the colors we mostly are gonna focus on because we lost. The reason I didn't apply them as intensely as I ultimately want them is because I would have lost out on a bunch of layering. And so I would end up with super white, super yellow, and very little layering between them. So already right here, I've got this white that the yellow comes across, but you can still see where the white was inside of it. So we're gonna focus on doing more of those things while also brightening. The blue, the purple, and the green, for the most part, are pretty good. We will work a little more green in, and the blue and the purple, probably just some touch-ups here and there. But the two colors we're gonna focus on the most is the white and the yellow. So again, I'm gonna go in and get a little bit of white. Now I can pick up a little bit more white than I wanted to the first time, but I'm still gonna tap it off to make sure I don't have blobs. Again, I'm gonna start down here, and my focus here is not gonna be scrubbing it out the way we did. My focus here is going to be just brightening up the areas I want. So I've got a little more of the white paint than before, and I like this bright spot, so I'm gonna make sure it's good and bright. Now notice how I'm laying my brush. It's not right on the end like before. It's kind of to the side. So what that's gonna do is watch when I, when I scrub like that. See how it fades this line out back here, but it applies the white at the front. So that's the kind of brush stroke you really wanna do is a little bit scrubbed. And then you can streak upwards and that's gonna give us these little tendrils that kind of flow up. And go ahead and let them flow over top of whatever color is around them. Scrub out that line a little bit. And let's get some more going in here because I feel like it's just way too thin in this area. And bring a little bit more up here too. Some of this might get covered by our mountain, but you, you don't really know until you draw it, so just act like with this part that the mountain is not going to exist and just put it wherever you feel like it should be. You can even put some of those little parts up in here a bit. Just make sure you feather out the bottom. I'm using really light pressure when I'm dragging up like that. Just a very light pressure. Add 
just a tiny bit more white up in here. If you don't like the white that you added, if you feel like it's too much, too intense, that's okay, just let it be there because then you can scrub the other colors over top of it and that'll kick it back a little bit and give the colors you layer on top a little bit more of a glow. some yellow. I'm just going to use the white that's already on my brush so I'm not really going to mix a lot of white into it. Now I do want to use this yellow pretty solid on its own because it's going to be very transparent and help me with that layered effect that I want. So I'm going to take that over the edge of the green a bit. Down into my white here. tiny hint of white here where I feel like it got a little too bright. You can really keep just layering these and adding colors in however you want to. here I just want to tone back some of that white just kind of dusting the yellow over it and I might even grab just a little more white just really like to get these colors layered on here really well I kind of feel like this part got away from me a little bit so my options are I can either layer some green over it to bring it back into the area if I end up not liking what I'm doing right now or I can just make sure my mountain covers it. Let's go ahead and work some green in. I didn't clean off my brush again. Lightly dusting it over that yellow so as not to blend it in too much. Try not to make judgments about what your painting is doing at this point. You may look at it and think, oh, it's a hot mess. But as long as there's things you can do to change it, then you still have a ways to go. Another thing is if there's a spot that gets out of your control that you just absolutely hate, then just let it dry completely and scrub a little bit of black over top of it to fade it back and then let the black dry and start over. It's one of the things that I love about painting on a black background is you can you can just paint over it and and keep going. I'm kind of going back and forth between the green and the yellow here. Lost a lot of my green there. I'm gonna put that back in. Make sure it feathers over top of that yellow a bit. So see right here, this little line, that started out as white, and then I layered the yellow over it, and now the green. So it's still giving that glow. Super light pressure here, just laying down a 
a few intense streaks of this green. I can go over that purple a little bit where I felt like the purple was a little bit too much. at it every once in a while to decide if you like what you've got going on. I decided that I'm missing a little bit of white. I want just a little bit more. So I'm going to use super light pressure here and just streak a bit of this white in. Like I'm almost not even touching the canvas. right here because this is going to be right here is really going to be my focal point that's where my mountains are going to be the lowest and so I want the eye to really be drawn right to this spot let's do just a couple things with the blue and the purple I'm going to mix up a color of blue that is quite a bit lighter I don't want too much paint on my brush. I'm just gonna touch up some of these spots here where the blue meets the green mostly. And then just add in a few darker blops of the blue to give it some more depth. some solid blue. Fade some of those out a little bit. side there and then we'll move into some purple and then I think we're about done with this with this part okay we'll mix just a hint of white in with the purple I didn't clean up my brush this time because all I have on here is blue and white so I don't have to worry about the yellow and the green making the purple muddy Touch up some of these purple spots a bit. Give them a couple of those little straight up streaks too. Blend out any hard edges with just solid purple. particularly like where the purple and the green touch because it kind of gives it a little bit of a iridescent quality. Okay, I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to go through and just make a couple last second touch-ups and then we will finish up the sky and start on our mountains. We're gonna put some stars in our sky and we wanna focus the stars on the areas that are black or blue or purple. Try to avoid getting too many stars in anything green, yellow, or white. So we're gonna take our flat brush 
and wet it in our water. And I'm just gonna wipe it off once on the edge of the jar. I'm gonna come over to my leftover white, pull some of it out, and mix the water that's in my brush into that white. So it's, it's pretty runny. You wouldn't wanna paint with this, but it'll be good for stars. If it's too thin, then your stars will dry see-through. If it's too thick, your stars won't really splatter. So just mix it until you're comfortable with the mixture. Now I'm gonna angle my brush toward the canvas, holding it about three inches away. Take the top of my finger and just flick. You get a line like that, just tap it out with your finger. You can paint over it with some black later. The direction that your brush is being held is gonna dictate your stars. If it's being flat and you just flick it, you'll get a line. If you move it around, then you can scatter them. But to get down in here, I'm angling it that way because then it'll flick in a straight downward line for the most part. And just add stars until you're happy with it and then stop. So now we're gonna use the one inch flat brush and we're gonna draw our mountains. And I've got some Mars black here. I'm just gonna get a little bit to start with on the tip of the brush. And I'm gonna make a mark where I want the lowest part of the mountains to be. So I want that to be right about there. Now my higher mountains are gonna be on the edge and I want them to be just below the center. So I'm using the edge of the brush placed flat and then I'm just gonna make some kind of organic shapes and we can go back and change them afterwards, refine them and reshape them. And then I'm gonna repaint all of this black just to make sure there's no stars or anything that's showing. Okay, now we're gonna let that dry so we can come back and place our water. All right, the final thing we're gonna do is add the water reflection here. So I've got my half inch flat brush or wash brush and I'm gonna wet it in a jar. And wipe it off a little bit on the edge. And I'm gonna start in the center with white. I'm gonna make my horizon line be right about here and I'm gonna bring white down this way, yellow on the edges, green, blue, purple. You can scatter it around a little bit more if you want. Um, that's just how I am gonna do it. The important thing you wanna do here to make it look like this is farther in the distance is you wanna make the little dashes closer together here. So a little bit smaller and closer together. As you move down, they can get a little bit bigger and more um, with more distance in between them until they eventually just fade out. So I've got my brush and I'm gonna get some white. Just on the end. And I'm gonna use the very edge of the brush. So I'm gonna make a mark right about there. That's where all of mine are gonna be. They're not gonna be higher or lower as I move across. They're all gonna start on that same horizontal line. So I'm just gonna make little dashes. It's mostly I'm just kind of touching the tip of the brush to the canvas. You can break them out of that little edge a bit. It doesn't need to have a perfectly solid edge. Notice that as I'm moving down farther, I'm putting fewer dashes, leaving more of the black showing in between. 
you can start making them a little bit longer. It's also gonna fan out a little bit more, so it's a little bit wider this, this far down. Try not to get them in a perfect line like I just did there. just a little more to the back here. Pretty pure white. Just fill in some of those blank spots. And now I'm gonna mix some yellow. I still have white on my brush because again, the yellow is gonna to be too see-through to put on there by itself. I'm gonna make sure that these lines overlap a little bit too. So I'm starting here, and I'm gonna come into the white a bit with that yellow. Whoops, that one got a little out. You can paint over any of them that get too high with a little bit of black. To that back area because again we want to keep it pretty bright back here if you get some little streaks like this that swoop down a tiny bit I think that's okay to me it looks like a little bit of a, a little more of a wave sure you keep a little bit of water on your brush. I didn't clean off my brush, but you can if you want to. Just gonna get some green and do the same thing. Remember to take it into the previous color so you don't have a line. I wouldn't I'm not going to take the green into the white at all, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to try and follow what you have going on in here more closely, you could. As we get into these darker colors, I'm not worried so much about making sure that the horizon here is really bright and bold. because again, my focus is these brighter areas. So I'm letting the green fade out a little bit quicker. Washed off my brush, I'm gonna grab just a teeny bit of white, just so I don't totally lose this blue. you can't see this blue as well as the other colors. I'm putting a little less effort into it here. And purple. I'm gonna keep this purple pretty dark. I added the tiniest hint of white. very own northern lights. You can get really creative with this and use any colors you like. Play with the directionality of, of the lights, the way they move, but the brush strokes that I showed you are a good place for you to start. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And you can follow me on Facebook and let me know what you'd like to see next. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.